for you. God, you know what's going on with her, with this issue of blood, this bleeding that is not stopping, oh God. We ask you to touch her afresh tonight. As your healing hand, that same healing, oh God, that same virtue that flowed to the woman with the issue of blood that will flow through Nadine. Right now we pray, Father, God, we pray for Laverne, oh God, who is standing by her mother, Miss, oh God, Miss Bantown. God, touch Laverne and strengthen her, oh God, and continue to draw her closer to yourself. God, those of us with family members, God, we pray that they will, God, be drawn to you, that they will walk with you, that they will talk with you, Father. God, do a miracle in their lives, we pray. God, remember her and dry up that bleeding, whatever is causing it, dear God, touch her in the mighty name of Jesus, for thou art worthy and worthy of praise. Brethren, anybody have any praise report tonight or a quick word of testimony before we go on tonight? A quick word of testimony. Anybody? Or a praise report? Anybody have yes, a praise I have report praise tonight? Testimony. Go ahead, go ahead. I give God thanks and give him the praise. You know, I went to see the doctor yesterday about my eyes, and he said everything is looking fine. Very, you know, it's coming on nicely. And I give God thanks for his healing hand, because, yes. you know, the doctors do their job, but then it's God who heals. Yes. And the other thing, you know, while I was driving, when my driver came and picked me up and driving along the road, and the spirit said to me, look over, and I'm looking at all these mango trees and see how they are laden with mangoes. And saying to me, you know, who provide these things for people, for, you know, my people to have food to eat? And look at the trees, look at them. Who could it be but God himself? You look at the coconut trees and to see how they are laden. And I'm yes. saying, my God, look at this. Who could it be but you? What a mighty God we serve. 
You know, this morning when I woke up and I look open the, the shade and I look out and see how beautiful the day is, and I lift my hands up to the Lord and oh, said, Father God, I thank you for you make this day. You make me to wake me up to see another beautiful day. Who could it yes. be but God himself? What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, yes. I'm going to say that there is no God who do all, make all these things. Man cannot do it. No man can do it but God himself. And I have to give him praise every minute of the day. In the night I turn in my bed, I'm praising him and give him yes. thanks. Yes. Because I love my God. My God loves me. He loves me before I love him. And I praise him and I glorify him in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen and amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Yes, we serve a mighty and an awesome God who loves us and he cares about us. Amen. Amen. So Andrew, let's continue to give God all the glory and all the praise tonight. We thank God for every one of you who have joined us here tonight. And God is faithful that whatever he has for us, he's going to give it to us. And we pray to God that God will speak to us tonight in a special way through his word by his Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, the one who will bring all things back to our remembrance whatsoever he has taught us. So we will continue our study tonight. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome to New Life uh, Prayer and Bible Study. And at this time, we're going to get right into the Bible study, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we are now at verses 8, and we're going to go through verses 8 to 10, possibly tonight. Um, so if you have your Bibles, just reach that for me right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just grab my Bible here. In Jesus' name. Yes, brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we are at verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother John, I'm going to ask you just to read that passage for us again tonight, Brother John. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, Sister Carmen. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, uh, Brother John. Love never, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. I'm sorry, did you want me to start from the beginning, Chris, or just that section? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead there. If you want to if you want to read the whole thing, if for connection for those uh, especially who uh, weren't here with us last time. Go oh, ahead. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. For if I if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Yes. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Amen. It always protects. Always trusts always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. Amen. Thank you, Brother John, for the reading of the Word of God. And may God bless the reading to our heart and to our mind and to our soul tonight in the name of Jesus. As you, if you have been with us for the last few weeks, as we know, you and I know we're here, we never, we never had, we had no idea that the Lord would be teaching us so much out of these passages. And we thank God for all of you who have contributed 
to the lesson that we're we're looking at tonight with questions or with your comments or with your own experiences and we thank God for all of those that has been a blessing to each and every one so God is so good brethren and um, look what he is doing is teaching us so much there's so much for us to learn about agape as we know the word in the King James charity or in the NIV or the other translation NASB um, the love, but that the, the uh, when we just say charity or we just say love, we're not really getting the impact of what God is trying to get us to see. And as we have all known, those of us who have been studying that we know he's talking about is agape, the agape. This is the love of God. This is, a, is the character of God. For we find in the scriptures, God is love. It is his character. God is agape. And if we have God in our lives, praise God, that agape is in birth in us. The moment we become children of the most high God, that agape, that character of God is also birth in us. We have the capacity to display agape in our lives. And so when we get to verse eight, and we see here where it talks about that it never fails all right that it uh, um, agape never fails um in other words it never falls to a lower place agape never falls to a lower place it never gets um uh, subdued it is never it, it's it's never knocked off of its position it is not lowered and and in in other sense meaning not just to be lowered, but to a place of condemnation. Agape can never get to that place. So this in-birth, this thing we're talking about, this in-birth agape, this in-birth thing, God-given agape, this in-birth God-given love never fails to accomplish the things we just heard Brother John read about. This agape never fails fails we see that love never fails agape never fail never fail what never fails to accomplish what we just read so let me just bring those up for us um here and we'll see it never fails everybody can see that all right as we have seen look at this list that we have seen before it never fails to be patient it never fails to be kind it uh, does not envy, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking or seek its own, it is not easily provoked, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, it does not delight in evil, rejoice in the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always persevere, it never fails. What a God, brethren. Amen. Brethren, I said, what a God. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Agape God. cannot fail. Yeah, and that word it means never, absolutely not never. ever. Agape cannot absolutely. It is so em emphatic. It cannot fail to accomplish these things in our lives. It suffers lost peace to refuse to retaliate with fleshly anger. It is kind when it's been tried. We see the true enemy and we know how to respond in a, in a godly way. It is not envious. It doesn't, it's not jealous and suspicious in heart, always suspicious of those especially who are good. It doesn't get heated up and boil over with envy. Right? It does not boast. It's not a braggart. We look at all of these. It's not puffed up to be filled with air. You remember that? You're not filled with air. It does not behave. It's uh, unbecoming. You know, this unbecoming conduct, not according to the standards appropriate to one's position. It is not unseemly. It is it, Agape does not seek her own. It doesn't get to the bottom of things for its own self-glory or to investigate, to come to a conclusion for self. 
for glory. Love does not do that. Agape does not do that. So we go through all the lists. If you go back to your notes, you'll see all the things that we have just outlined for us tonight, that agape is not any of these things, and it shall never, ever fail. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here to accomplish Amen. these things. And somebody will say, what do you mean agape cannot fail? All of these things can, I mean, can be accomplished in the believer's life, because you're saying agape never fails to accomplish all these but look at it, brethren. I'm going to give you a chance to chime in here in a little bit. When these elements or conditions go the opposite way, when all of this stuff that we just read, all this list that we just saw here, brethren, when all of these things go into place in our lives, are in our lives, they are in birth inside of us, but they, they are not accomplished they are not lived out they are not fleshed out right it is not a failure of agape it is not agape that failed so my question here's my first question for us and i'm gonna ask you to to just chime in anyone and uh, and be as brief as you possibly can what is it that fails and why does it fail if agape cannot fail to accomplish that list in our lives, what is it that fails that, that causes this list not to be accomplished in our lives? Anybody? We, we fail. We, we what is it that fail? Why, why, why is it that, let me, let me bring this up one more time. Why is it that we lack patience? Why is it that that is, that happens in our life. Is it because agape is weak? Is it, uh, why do we retaliate with anger is what he is saying? Why, why does that happen? Somebody tell me any one of these things. Chime in, please. Because we're not walking close to God. Okay, Sister Dennis, we're not walking close to God. Anybody else? Why it fails? What are we? We, we lose focus. We focus on ourselves. Yes. Yes, we lose focus. We, we're not walking close. We lose focus. We, we're looking at ourselves instead of uh, the, the mind of God. Anybody else? And as we look through this list, we can see our own shortcomings, don't we? Yeah. We look through this list and we can identify where we are weak, which area of our lives on this list needs some working on. So if love agape cannot fail to accomplish this, and it's not a, 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 it's not a fault of a weakness of agape, but it's because of us, um, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Love, show love more, show more love. We need to have unconditional love. Yeah. The love that God shows us, we reflect it back to the people. But we are so weak, we can't even do it. Sometimes we, that's why we fail. So we possible? have to depend on God. Yes. Is it possible that I can become a person, a child of God, who does not retaliate in anger or is not envious or that I'm not boastful or is it possible for you and for me to live that kind of a life? And how is it possible? Again, I mean, no, this may sound redundant, but we need to stress it and regurgitate it so we don't lose the focus of what really is going on here because this is where God is, the God delights in his people when we allow him to do these things in our lives. Anybody, go ahead with that one. We can do all things through Christ that strengthened us. So we can't do it on ourselves. But when we are born again, we 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 um sub we are we put ourselves under subjection. Mm -hmm. We 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 ask God to work through us so that we can do what he wants us to do. But it's a very difficult thing. But he said we, his, his righteousness is what we depend on. We live in his righteousness. 
Amen. Man. If that makes any else? sense. Anybody it, else? It, it may be the case that we need more practice. <laughs> we need more practice. So <laughs> we, should ask, we should ask the Lord to put a difficult person in our life so that we can learn to practice more. <laughs> Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? Please chime in. Please chime well, in. I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect, but patience I have. Boastful I'm not. Love but, but I have. Tell me, how, tell me how, would, how would you be able to overcome that, my dear sister? How are you able to overcome and to be that person that God wants you to be in? Because, Pastor, I am so grateful. Patience mm. I have. Patience. Mm. Patience mm. I have. There's no ifs and buts about it. <laughs> no matter what. And... um boastful i'm not and i was speaking with my one of my uh, my older sister today and we were talking and i said to her i thank god that when he created me he did not make me to be a boastful person humble i don't think highly of myself but humble yeah he wants us to be that Definitely. yes humble i you but, know but i give god thanks and it's only because i pray and ask god to please Give me those attributes. That's the it's, it's like a day. It's like a day-to-day -day evaluation that we have to right. go through. That's what I was gonna say. It's a daily walk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's just like sometimes when I call, make phone calls, and you know, sometimes you gotta wait so long on the phone. And when whenever they and over and over they come back and say thanks. I go to maybe the bank or something and they have a new clerk. And I or I go to the store and they have a new clerk. And I have to be the one they have to learn from. And mm -hmm. I always say I thank God I am the one. Because yes. you know, when it takes so long, and they always thank me for being patient. And yes. I know. As I said before, my son said, mommy, you have been blessed with patience because, mm. you know, so that's one thing I know I can brag about is, is <laughs> when God, when God does it, I'm not ashamed. I'm not, yes. I'm not boastful, but I know patience is what I have. Patience. We got to brag about the Lord and, and <laughs> look at it another way. Look at it another way, church. You know, um, some of this can um, follow with this one. Um, one of the thing I believe that will help us more to focus on this thing is to see ourselves as you know the other person is better than me that's right you that's know? right pastor that's see it that they are better not that i'm better but they are better they are better know? yes and uh and not and be willing to 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 um to not win be willing to not win anything you know if we have this attitude of course, we're going to win in Christ Jesus a lot of yes. things, but we we don't have this attitude that I have to, I have to be seen, I have to win or anything. You know, anybody else can share in in that area before we move on. I was on. thinking that each one of us, each believer, is at a different point in their life. Sometimes they have victory over certain things. And they are defeated in some. Mm -hmm. There's like a stronghold. Yes. Um, God's word does not lie. God's word is truth. And we are the ones that are supposed to line up ourselves with the Lord in the scriptures. But sometimes there's a stronghold. Any one of these things that we're going through in yes. First Corinthians. Um, yes. Sometimes we have victory over, like Sister Molly says, her patience, but she could be down in forbearance. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we're grappling with different things. And like the children of Israel, they, they go on for a while, victorious in something, yes. and then yes. bam. They got down. hit down, yes. and God has to deal with them accordingly. I don't think yes. any of us will ever in this life come to that point of saying, 
I don't have to worry about forbearance. I don't have to worry about kind, being unkind or being kind. We, it's a daily fight. It's a daily thing. Yeah, exactly, Sister Carmen. And we're going to have, as we said, there are going to be some of these areas that we're going to be you know, having some issues with, but we're not going to ignore them. You know, no. we're not going to ignore them because I am weak here, or I'm strong here. And Sister Carmen is right. They're, none of us can claim, you know, I have the victory in all of these areas. And if anybody say they have a victory in all of these areas, maybe we're hearing a voice from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pastor Chris, this. Go ahead, um, Sister Georgia. Right. This, I got a wall art for my sister who is getting baptized next week. This is what I got her, a wall art, you know, just to remind yeah. her of all of these things. Because I know it's not possible to be, you know, strong in all of them. But no. that we should try. You yes. know, as I say, we it's a know. daily. Yes. yes. So it's just amazing. Yeah. This very same artwork here, you know, I got <laughs> for her as a gift for her <laughs> baptism. It's, it's beautiful, I tell you. And it encourages us, it reminds us, you know, what he wants us to be. Yes, you know, however, what, not what a, yes, what a standard, praise the Lord, you know. Yeah. And so we have something looking forward to each to, day yes. of our lives. We have something to look forward to. God and something to work weak. on. And, you know, yes, something to I have something on. to work on here, Lord. God, yeah. I'm having a problem here with this area of uh, I'm not easily angered, you know. <laughs> God, I need your help right here. So it keeps us focused and, and in prayer. You know, to know that if we do this evaluation, God, I need your help here in this area of my life. So we see, we can move on and let somebody else have another thought. All right? But we That's see here that, go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. On the other hand, we, you know, sometimes Christians usually say, well, you know, I'm human, I'm weak, and I will, you know, be a failure in this area. But um, we got to go back to his word, which says, um, which says that um, greater is he that is in you, in me, than he that is in the world. And yes. all these things are a part of the worldly system, which yes. we as God's children, you know, can be overcomers too if we depend upon God. Sometimes we, became, we, we, we become, or uh, we remain weaklings because we mm. fail to trust God mm. and to practice living godly lives. Yeah. Or we just I, pray, pray, or we just pretty much give up with that we're, we're not recognizing the weaknesses and, and, and depending on God to help us with them. Yes, Sister Carmen. Cha um, James chapter four reminds us that um, in in verse seven Submit yourself, therefore, to God. That is where the, the beginning stage of yes. being victorious. Submitting first to God. This is not willpower. This is God's power. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's power that's going to help us to resist the devil. And he yes. will flee from you. God does not resist these things. The unkindness the lack of bearing under with somebody, the gossiping, yes. whatever it is, that is the devil, but we have to resist him and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, yeah, to God yes. and he will draw nigh to you. Yeah, to you, yes. It is an active thing. We have, to, we have to resist and we have to draw nigh. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, brother John, do you have anything to add here before we move on, my dear brother? No, no. Good, good discussion, Chris. Amen. So it says that um, agape never fails to accomplish. In other words, it's what he said. It never fails. Agape, which is of God, can never, absolutely never, ever fail to do this in our lives. And if something is lacking in our life, it is not God's agape. It is not a fault of God's agape, why it happens. So that leaves us on our knees before God, realizing that the problem is on our side. So we need God. So it never fails. So look at the contrast now as we move forward. Love never fails 
And now he's going to move into this other area of what does fail, what will fail. Right? Agape, which is of God, which is instituted of God, a character of God, a design of God for his people can never fail. And let us look at what he says in verse, let me bring that up for us here. Um, what he says will fail. Now we have that, right? He says, agape charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Amen? Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So now we're looking at these three elements now that he's telling us. Agape can never fail to accomplish these things, but here are the things that are going to fail. So we have the contrast, and remember, we are talking about in the context of the gifts of the Spirit. This whole uh, passage we're reading from chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14 is in the context of the gifts of the Spirit that God gives to his church. So the first one he says, in technically or literally, if, however, there are prophecies, right? If, that the literal word translation, if, however, there are prophecies, they shall fail. Meaning to make completely inoperative. God is saying prophecies will be made completely inoperative or will be put out of use. That's going to happen, All right? So we move on, right? So he's saying that it's going to put out of use as, as, as something that was very important. And each of us maybe can identify something that has been very important to us, that played a very important role. But time passed, and that thing that was important at that time or uh, um, was up to date at that time when you bought it, became inoperative, became obsolete, outdated, all right? So at the time it was good for its use, but the time came when something better came along and you had to get rid of it. Anybody give us an example of something very quickly that we, you can pinpoint of, it was very good when it was made or when I bought it, but man, in a few years, I had to do something else. What's that? What's the number one thing that we all face? <laughs> Computers. <laughs> yes, it's a person. <laughs> all right, that's the number one thing. You buy a computer today, and in two years or three years, it, it, it's, it gets so slow, filled up with so much data and so much stuff that we, it's, it's almost inoperative. And it has to be put out to the pastor and we, uh, for something else new comes along. Sometimes nothing is even wrong in terms of the functionality of the thing, but it's outdated and you want a more upgraded, uh, upgraded item. Isn't that so? Amen. Uh, so, so in this sense, God is saying that prophecies will be made completely inoperative. And we're going to talk about time frame and markers as we come along, okay? So what does that mean? When God says, we have to identify when he says, in the context of the gifts of the Spirit, and now God is saying prophecies will fail or will become inoperative. Um, what does he mean by that? What is prophecy in this context of chapters 12 through chapter 14? Anyone? Probably the giving of revelation, knowledge, okay. teaching, revealing the word. It's uh, specific, specifically in the context of a prophet. I mean, prophecy means telling truth. Yes, but in the, in the context of that time and, and, and the role of prophets, it probably is more so around the idea of, of revealing truth that previously was not known. No, not known. Amen. Yes, Brother John. Anybody else want to add to that? So he's talking about the, the revealed word of God, you know, that was not previously 
known. And in the broader context of the scripture, you know, um, I know we have learned that the man of God who, who, who uh, gives out or the woman of God within the context of a woman teaching um, is giving out the word of Almighty God, is declaring what God says. And again, as Brother John says, there are specifics in prophecy like we have with Paul and Agabus uh, and, and the daughters of, uh, as he was traveling to Jerusalem during the Acts, and we see they, um, he took his, the belt and he hold uh, Paul's belt and he says, the man who owns this belt, as I tie it around my wrist, so you will be, you'll be captured, you will be shackled um, when you go to Rome. Uh, and so that was a specific um, prophecy designed specifically for, for the Apostle Paul. Um, so we see these two elements of prophecy, okay? So, uh, and the next question, how does this relate to the ministry of the prophet or defining the biblical prophet? How does this relate to it? When God says, the prophecy shall become inoperative. Doesn't God need his word to go out, his messages to go out? What do we mean by it? How does this relate? Anyone? In early time, the Lord um, uses to send his message through, prophet, through the prophets Sunday. And now these days, he sent it through the Holy Spirit through us. Okay. Anything else? You want to add or anybody else want to add to that? How does that relate to the ministry of the prophet? I don't, I don't think that prophecy has stopped as far as preaching the word, teaching the word. But the, some of the, the message doesn't change, but methods change. Mm -hmm. We're not in a building right now. We're, we're on Zoom. Yes. So the, 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 the method has changed, mm -hmm. but the message is timeless. Yes. And God stands behind his word. It never, I don't care who is trying to bat it down. It cannot be. No. I remember reading about uh, Queen Mary, how she, she tried to kill God's prophets and tried to burn the Bibles. And no wonder they called her Bloody Mary, mm -hmm. uh, the drink now, because she was so bloody. She was a woman of blood, killing God's people as they give the word. Nobody can stop the word. Mm -hmm. The prophecy continues, but some of the methods have changed. Yes. Like we are so facing the, the, today. Yes. Yeah, so the general, yes, the, that general umbrella of prophecy in terms of delivering the word of God is one aspect. And then we have the other area, which is the gift of prophecy that somebody literally has. Sister Sharon, there are some things that we hear and sometimes people get skeptical, but it's, you know, as we say, a man of God, as he delivers the word of God and God gives him a word, he declares, Sister Sharon just told me this a couple of weeks ago, there's a minister that was ministering in St. Vincent and the, while he was ministering the word of God, he had a message for the island of St. Vincent and the message was, if the leaders of St. Vincent does not change, does not turn and start to acknowledge God and, 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 um, and righteousness, God is going to destroy this island. Something major is going to happen and happen soon. And this was just a few months before the erupted specific, not the island, but he said the entire island will the destruction and, um, and a specific prophecy and um, people people heard that and now people are making reference to it, that this man of God actually did prophesy specifically talk about the volcano um, that's a full sufferi sister Sharon Yes, Pastor, I didn't hear you. 
Yes, the 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 the, uh, the minister that um, made that uh, that prophecy concerning the the destruction in in Saint Vincent. Did he mention the volcano at the time? Um, I can't recall. You know. Okay. All right. So Sister Sharon can't recall, but there are other instances where God has given. Deli I mean, a message directly, deliberately to an individual, and it has taken place exactly as the, as the woman of God or the person of the man of God has declared it. So we have that area of the, of the ministry of the prophet in regards to declaring something specific that has not taken place. We're not talking about declaring truth or adding truth to the Bible. We're talking about the ministry of the, the prophet in that regard of being specific to a person. All right, so um, he says, not only will prophecy cease, all right, or become inoperative, but what else he says? Tongues. Tongues, huh? tongues. He says, tongues will cease, all right? I know people wanna get into, but we're gonna do a, a whole study when we're done with Corinthians on the gift of tongues, because a lot of people are still confused about this. And, um, and some on one side um, have one idea and practice and some on the other side of another idea and practice and people are still unclear about what this gift is. So tonight we're not gonna get into that in detail, but God is telling us that agape, the love of God, the sacrificial love of God will not cease, but prophecy will come to an end. It become fully inoperative and also that tongues will cease. God here is not talking about regular speech and the various languages of the world that one day all of that, because some people might say, well, God is saying that, um, throwing out the supernatural and saying God here is saying that he's going to bring all peoples back together with one language as he break them. He separated them at the, at the um, Tower of Babel. So God is going to get rid of the languages and bring them. But that's not what God is saying because the context of chapter 12, 13, and 14 is the gifts of the Spirit. So this is what God is talking. So we have is not, not the abolishment of many languages and reverting to one, but he's talking about the gift of tongues that we saw in Acts and in the Corinthians. Um, so it's, this is speaking under the anointing of God in a language of supernatural origin. That is what he's talking. God is saying tongues will cease. This supernatural speaking the supernatural origin of speaking like we saw on the day of pentecost these men did not know the languages of these people and they were able to declare the word of god in the language of the people from which they were come this was a supernatural event it was not their language and then we find on the other hand another supernatural origin god says the tongues of angels so we have this God used tongues of men in a supernatural way for those who never knew the language to speak and send a message to the people from those lands. And also God will use the language of angels or the tongues of angels that we see in Corinthians. God is saying, whichever they are, both of these, that's why we see tongues here is in the plural form. It is um, third person plural that they will cease. However, prophecy is singular, right? It's a singular third person. It, prophecy, it is going to cease, right? And then we move on to knowledge and it says it again, third person singular, not plural, right? So the tongues are plural, but the prophecy is singular and the knowledge is also singular, right? So we see something is going on here that God is saying that the tongues is not just men, but it's both the tongues of men and the tongues of angels given through men that God is saying is going to cease. All right. So anybody have any comment on that before we move on to the knowledge? Pastor Chris. Yes. What I am seeing, right? Agape, the love of God. 
You know, yes. it's, you know, it is dear from the beginning in that God, because of God's love, he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Right? But then now everything else, prophecy, tongues, knowledge, they fall under the umbrella of God's love, his yes. overall love. And these things within his love will cease at some time. But is, God, yes. go ahead. But God's love will never ever cease. It's just never always is, there. Never cease. Never huh? cease. So it's that will just never always cease. there. Praise the Lord, and He's gonna accomplish these things in our lives through these things. But these things, all right, these are added. All right, God in His mercy and His love and His kindness. When the church is birthed. God gives these gifts to the church, but God is telling the church these things are going to cease one day. They're going to become obsolete. They're going to become inoperative. All right. Well, uh, so our focus is our focus is not on the gifts. Our focus is on the giver, the one who is love himself. Right. So we focus on that and what God wants us to do in our lives. And then we see, it says, if knowledge, if there is knowledge, it shall vanish away. All right? The same result as prophecy. In other words, that knowledge will be made completely inoperative or put out of use. Which knowledge is God talking about? All right? Some might think that, oh, God is talking about the knowledge that we acquire on this earth, that we may acquire knowledge about um, science, knowledge about technology, knowledge about all of the geography, geology, all of these things, um, that these are the knowledge that are going, that God is dealing with. Remember again, church, this is very important for us when we're dealing with studying the word remain contextual in the context. We have another passage that says, knowledge shall increase in the latter days. That's the knowledge of the world, the knowledge of life, the knowledge of all of these things. That's a different context. This context is the context of the gifts of the spirit, chapters 12 to chapter 14. Right? It is one subject going on from chapter 12 to chapter 14. So God is saying, Knowledge shall fail or shall become inoperative one day, right? It shall not, as a matter of fact, it's talking about that we are going to know even as we are known. God is talking about this knowledge, a supernatural knowledge that comes from God. We did not have this before. We not, cannot have this knowledge on our own. As Sister Carmen was saying, it is not something that we can work on our own and acquire it or build up or study to get it. No, God is not talking about that kind of a knowledge here. God is talking about a supernatural um, thing that he gives to the church when you become born again. It is a gift of knowledge. What does not mean to know, to know what? Primarily, what would you say? Let me give that to you, brethren. What, what would you say if God is saying this knowledge that I'm talking about is that knowledge that is of supernatural origin? What is this knowledge? What is it that God impart to us? Let me hear your voices for about two minutes before we close up. His word. When... Go ahead, um, uh, Errol. Yeah, something. Go ahead, brother Errol. Brother John was speaking. Oh, it's brother John. Go yeah. ahead, brother John. No, I, I was just saying it's his word. He, you know, we in in all of these methods, whether it be tongues or whether it be prophecy or, or knowledge, it's God speaking, and so we can be sure that He will always give us exactly what we need with regards yes. to His word. And so I, I think, I, I think in all these things, it's pointing to his word that he gives us. To equip and then I add to that, Brother John, yes. <laughs> his word is king. But then when he returns, all of this will be, we know in part, we see in part, but when he comes, we don't need our Yes, we're, going, yes, we're coming down knowledge. to that one. That's just like, <laughs> 
when he comes, he, he comes in the yes, flesh, he will be known as we should be known. Yes, yes, amen. Brother Chris alluded to that earlier on. Um, uh, I forgot what part uh, he was talking about, but um, praise the Lord, we, we are like little babies now, mm -hmm. groping for the, his knowledge, more yeah. of his knowledge, more of him as we draw near to him. Yeah. But one day, hallelujah, yeah, praise the Lord. all of Amen. this, yes. we yeah. will we'll be seen everything as it should be seen. Yes, he says, now we know in part, you know, but one day we're going to know even as Amen. we are known, Amen. you know, one day we're going to know even as we are known. That means it's not going to be a gift of knowledge anymore that is sporadic, right? It's, it's not going to be in part, imperfect. It's the knowledge that we're going to know God. We're going to know it. We're going to see him. We're going to, Hallelujah. We're going to know Hallelujah. God. We're going to know fully, Bertrand, even as we Amen. are known. Amen. You know? he, Amen. When the Lord Jesus Christ is in the, in the flesh on the earth, he did not need the gift of knowledge because he is God. He knows everything. He knows, he knows, he, he knows our thoughts, he knows our whereabouts. You remember when Nathaniel, when Nathaniel went up to him and, 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 and said, can anything good thing come out of Nazareth? And, uh, and Jesus said to him, uh, Nathaniel, before, uh, when Jesus said, here's a, uh, a true Israelite, uh, he was like a righteous man, and Nathaniel, wanted, how do you know me? And Jesus tell him, when you were underneath the fig tree. You know, <laughs> I knew you, and he knew his thoughts, and, and he knew exactly what he was thinking and saying while he was sitting there under that tree. And the Lord revealed to him, the Lord did not need the gift of, because he, he is knowledge. He knows everything about us, and God, praise the Lord, Sister Carmen, one day God is going to reveal to give to us Praise all the, Lord. the hindrance, the all, everything that we saw that, that hinder us to fulfill these elements of agape in our lives, all of that will be gone out of our lives, and we're going to see God for who he really is. He will be the real deal, you know? brother Chris. <laughs> oh, gee, Lord, help us. Can you imagine in this flesh, if we ever see the fullness of God, maybe this body will explode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If serving God in this limited form is so sweet, Virgin, can you imagine when God remove yes. all of this stuff and we shall see him as he is? Praise yes. the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Verse, verse, Praise we Lord. see verse 9 shedding light on verse 8. Knowledge and prophecy, he said, often work together. Sometimes somebody has knowledge, but the knowledge, they have the knowledge, but the knowledge has to be revealed. It has to be yeah. spoken, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The giving out of the knowledge is the prophetic part of that. So they say knowledge and prophecy, they're working together partially, yeah. they're in part, mm -hmm. they're perfect. But the, the whole mm -hmm. is not yet disclosed, is what God is saying. They're just in part, praise the Lord. We only seen glimpses, as the comment tell us. We only seen to a mirror of glass darkly. You know, when you went into a dirty glass and you try you're squinting and you're trying to focus and look good. You see, you see what you're seeing out there, but it's not very clear. It's not, it's not 4K. Oh, praise God. We're gonna be maybe a hundred K in the name of Jesus. But this body, this body of sin is, is God. Amen. So Amen. As we wrap it up. Verse 10 gives us the duration, right? So verse, verse 9 10. tells us, you know, the condition. Uh, 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 it's in part. And verse 10 now gives us the duration. You see, verse 10, what it says. Let me put that up as we look at that again. Verse 10 gives us the duration. What it says. Perfect is But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Or in other words, when that which is perfect, literally, when, however, should come the perfect. When the perfect comes, 
Hallelujah. Our Lord yes. is perfect. In part, the partial things, brethren, shall be done away. So we have the time frame that when this happens, literally when perfection comes, in other words, when we as Christians reach full maturity. Amen. This Amen. is the context he's talking about. When the believer comes to full maturity. Praise the God. The uh, Bible yeah. give an example of saying it's like the old pirate um, uh, telescope. You remember those old telescopes that you see the pirates, you see, are the, not just the pirates, but, you know, from the galley ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, ex it, it's in parts, maybe three or four different sections. And as it's pulled out from one section to the end, it goes out to the full extent of its focus. And this telescope is unveiled or unloaded one stage at a time and functions in its full strength when it's pulled out. God says, when we are at our full strength at the very end of our walk, of our pilgrimage, when we have become mature yeah. in God, the impart thing shall be done away. When perfection comes, how are God. we going to become mature, fully Lord. perfect before God? Sister, just a garment, praise the Lord. You said it already. Say it again, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Our and perfection that perfect when perfect come, and that which was in part, shall be done away. Hallelujah. <laughs> The Lord. Brethren, we're gonna make perfect one day. Guess what's oh, gonna happen? It said, We shall be holy. Mm -hmm. Praise yes. the Lord. For the Praise trumpet it. of the Lord shall sound. That's the only time we're gonna be fully mature, brethren. Because we're walking, we're walking through this pilgrim land right now. And all the stuff that Agape is, we still fall short of some of that, brethren. We're yeah. still not to full maturity in all of this stuff yet. But one day, brethren, we're going to be fully mature in all of this Amen. stuff. Because why? Jesus is coming back again, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Uh, we yeah. shall be changed and we yeah. shall be like him for we shall see him yeah. as he yeah. is. Yeah. Brethren, we have a blessed hope. Yeah. We have a hope that we're looking forward to that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again and when he comes, he's going to make us fully and completely perfect and mature in God. Mm. But we're not satisfied with our imperfection here. We're not satisfied that, yes, I am weak in my patience. I'm not satisfied that I have ended my life. I'm not satisfied that I become easily angered or I'm provoked easily. I'm not satisfied with that. Lord God of heaven, help me and strengthen me in these areas of my life so that I can be the child of God you want me to be. God, I am weak but you are strong hallelujah you know, we don't come to God with pride and saying, oh, I am not so bad like this other man over here. Or I'm not so yeah. bad like this woman over there. But God, help me in my weakness and make Amen. me strong so that, oh God, I don't have too far to go to the maturity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter, brethren, if you're born again, how far we are. You might just get saved today. And next week, Jesus come and he takes you to be with him. And you're going to be made completely perfect. Hallelujah. You're going to be Hallelujah. Yeah. Virgin God is good. Give him some praise tonight, He's Virgin. Awesome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. Hallelujah. Blessed Hallelujah. be the name of the Lord. He is, is God. He is good. God, praise the I Lord. I love him. I love him. I love him for what he has done. 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 I love him. I love him for what he has done. He has done so much for me. Sing up, brethren. I love him. I love him. I love him for what he has done. I love him for what he has done. I love him for what he has done. I love him. I love him. I love him for what he has done. He has done so much for me. Brethren, I couldn't hear your voice, man. I wanted to sing to the glory of God, brother. Okay. 
Oh, my brother, I'm so happy. We're going to have Brother John going to be leading the Bible study next week, God willing. So at this time, we're going to ask Brother John if he would just close for us in a word of prayer. And any other last thought that you may have, my dear brother, please go ahead. Hallelujah. Thank you. Our Father, thank you. Now we thank you, Lord, that we have a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Mm. Lord, how we long to be there with you and to see you and to see you in your fullness of your glory and your grace. Oh, thank you. Father, you called us in the meantime to be witnesses and testimony, to be lights where we are. As we've said, as we've said this evening, Lord, we're, we're not yet there. We're not yet perfect. We do ask for your grace, Father, that we might be more and more the people that you desire us to be, that others might see in us that hope, that assurance, yes. that grace that can only come from our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, to be a help to one another. Help us to be a help to those in need. Help us, Father, to share with others that grace that you have given to us. And Father, we'll, thank, we'll be thanking you and praising you all along the way, all along the way, yes. until that great day when we behold you in all of your glory. It's in Jesus' name we thank you and praise you. Amen. 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 Oh, bless Amen. the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless Amen. 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 Brethren, uh, brother, brother Gil, Elder Gill from Hillcrest sent a, um, a message over to us that the, the churches, they're uh, responsible for organizing to get in um, clothing and non-perishable food packed and shipped over to St. Vincent. And if they want to know if we would want to participate in that. So if you have um, good clothing, um, barely worn or new that you'd like to, to send to be a part of that, um, please, you know, you can, you can do that. You can bring it and then we'll get it over to Hillcrest. They have a, a um, they have a, a organization going on there and, and functionality and, and the logistics together to get all these things packed and shipped off to St. Vincent. Um, not only for the clothing and, and, and non-perishable goods, but also if you want to maybe help to, um, offset some of the cost to ship some of these, um, um, barrels to St. Vincent, you can donate cash also if you want to be a part of that, all right? So, Virgin, it was good again for us to be here tonight, and you've been so, you know, so uh, involved, and uh, your prayer and your concern and your praises, we thank God for each and every one of you. Remember, continue praying for those that are listed on the prayer list, not only tonight, but all the lists so far who are still in need of prayer. Remember them, don't forget them. Call them, encourage them in the Lord. Those we haven't seen in a while, please call them and encourage them in the Lord of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We look forward to Amen. seeing you again Amen. on the Lord's Day at 11.30. Remember, it's uh, communion. We're going to be partaking of communion. Um, this is the first Sunday of May. In June, we, as we say, we're making transition slowly. In, in June, we are going to have first Sunday and third Sunday um, back to communion until we go back to um, all the, the Lord's Day communion. So for now, we're moving from one Sunday, the first Sunday, to two Sundays in June. Okay, so be prepared for that. So, Virgin, God bless you. May the Lord I'm bless you. I'm asking prayers, yes, go brother, ahead, brother. brother Chris. Yes. I'm asking prayer this Sunday. I'll be in Pennsylvania in person um, at a missionary presentation. Okay. So I'm asking you, for, I'm asking the brothers and sisters to keep me in prayer Sunday morning. Yes. Okay, Sister Carmen. Okay. We'll definitely do that. Please remember, Sister Carmen, in your prayers, brethren. Brethren, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Mm -hmm. And cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace, grant you shalom, grant you completeness in him. Walk with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and be a blessing. In the Hallelujah. name of Jesus, greet each other. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. And Sherry. Yes. All right, John. <laughs> In, uh, Brother John, it's nice to meet you on here. Nice to meet you. Good night.
We look forward to it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.